opening like a volcano. Can you picture a volcano with a big opening, but it has like a gap that's going straight down to the bottom? Like it doesn't, it doesn't close up. So the lava can come out the top. Do you guys kind of see a volcano that's erupting from this shape? But the biggest thing to notice is it definitely has a gap. And we talked about yesterday, not yesterday, Friday, that when you have gaps and you cut perpendicular to the axis of rotation, when you get a gap, the cross section is no longer a circle disc, but you guys told me it was a washer because it has a hole in it. Can you see as we cut sideways how we have this washer? There's a washer. There's a gap in the middle. There's a hole in the middle. Hole in the middle and it goes right through. Says I, there's a hole in the donut to shave and a haircut. Did you ever see, hear that song? No. Okay. All right. Well, anyways. Okay. So there's a song that, it should just be quiet, Tina. All right. Here we go. So we got a gap in the middle. When you cut it, there's going to be a hole in the middle of that cut, but it's still gonna be circular. Why is it circular? Because we're rotating around an axis. Think of that revolving door, right? You're tracing out a circular pattern. So you're definitely getting a circular pattern. It just has a hole in it. And how do we get the area of that? We take the bigger circle, which we're gonna call have a radius of r. We take the little circle, which is little r, and we're gonna subtract the areas of those circles. So let's set this sucker up. All righty, first things first. What axis are we going around? We're going around the... So instead of going about the x-axis, let's go about the y-axis, okay? Let's go about the y-axis since there's no more questions. Instead of the x-axis, let's go about the y-axis and think about how it changed. So our second problem, y equals x cubed, y equals 8, x equals 0. This time we're rotating about the y-axis, and I still want to use my disks method. Okay, we're still practicing. We're not putting it all together yet. Well, don't worry, we'll start putting it all together soon, okay? And it's going to start getting very difficult, okay? So if you have any questions at all, please ask. I want you to walk through the following steps. Number one, what does it look like? So you want to draw a diagram, okay? Number one, diagram. That diagram should involve what is the base function, y equals x cubed, y equals 8, x equals 0. What area am I looking at? The reason we need this is because we need to decide what exactly does this shape look like so when I cut it, what kind of cross section am I getting? Am I getting a disc? Or is there a hole? In which case we're going to learn and move forward and talk about the next method, which is the washer method. So the very first thing you should do is diagram. The second thing you should do is what is my axis of rotation? Because I'm cutting perpendicular to my axis. So it's just an a picture. It's like a bowl. Are you guys getting like a bowl? Well, that y-axis, right? Or that y-axis. Yeah. Good. Good, 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 good. Going about a y-axis and getting me a bowl, right? Actually, it's called a paraboloid when you get to Calc 3. Okay? It's actually called a paraboloid when you get up there to Calc 3. Okay, good. Like a bowl. All righty, two. Two, 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 two. Get your diagram number two. Look at your axis of rotation. Because you cut perpendicular to it, that will define for you your variable of integration. So your axis of rotation, because you're cutting perpendicular to it, will give you your variable of integration. So that should be the second thing you look at. The third thing then is the limits. And they, the limits should match your variable of integration. I'm telling you where students get hung up on these. First, they don't draw a picture. 
correctly. Second, students will not give me the correct variable that you're integrating with respect to. But if you're going to use a disk or washer method, okay, which is what we're focusing on practicing right now, we're going to be cutting perpendicular to our axis of rotation. And therefore, our limits will match that variable of integration. And then the last thing is to decide, am I getting a disk or am I getting a washer? And that will determine whether you're simply going to use a pi r squared or a pi big r squared minus a pi little r squared as we go forward. So those are our steps, kind of when I'm talking about a disk and washer method. But let's see what we got here. Ben, did you draw cubed root of x? I'm not sure. Maybe we did cubed root of x. Let me see what you did. Just because your picture looks a little different than my picture. So we got y equals x cubed. y equals x cubed actually goes on this side too, over here, but I think we want to stick on the positive side, we want to stay on the positive side because we also have x equals 0 and y equals 8. So we're taking that region. Did you get this? Is that what you got? Did you do it? Yeah, okay, you did it. You did it. Oh, you did. You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. So make it go like, yeah, you yeah. see. You see. You yeah. got it. I like it. It's like a tulip pole. That's actually prettier. I like one of those shapes. Oh, you did the same thing. You guys both did the same. Okay, you see what's going to make that paraboloid. Good, 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 good. And did you set up your integral? DY? Did you guys do DY? Because you're cutting it perpendicular to the Y axis. Cutting perpendicular to the Y axis. So you guys are cutting this way? Right, you're cutting your disks perpendicular to the y-axis, which means my radius is perpendicular to the y-axis. So everybody, I'm coming, I'm walking, Every volume equals, because we're cutting perpendicular to the y-axis, right? That means we're integrating with respect to y, and Eli, you told me zero to eight, and then pi r squared, and so our radius, I'm just going to put a little note, our radius has to be a function of y, which means if we haven't already done so, we want to do x equals. We have to solve for x, right? So let me undo that garbage and say, if we're getting a function of y, that means we want to solve for x so that we have x equals something, 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 okay? And so that radius is that distance between these two curves right here, perpendicular, so it's the outer curve. Eli, what did you get when you solved for x? You got the cube root of y, thank you. And then the inner curve is also x, that's x equals zero. And so that means that you guys should be taking the volume to be 0 to 8 pi times your radius, which is outer curve, cubed root minus cubed root of y minus inner curve 0. Whoops, that's squared, radius squared, dy. And so really, dang it, really I want to be integrating from 0 to 8 of pi times y to the what fractional exponent? One-third squared, beautiful, one-third squared, which actually is going to get, I'll write it, one-third squared, right, cubed root squared, and can't we, we could multiply exponents and get two-thirds, so we should be integrating two-thirds. The cubed root is one-third, so it's y to the one-third. If we square it, we're multiplying exponents. I'm going through this because I can, there was quite a few people that got messed up on, on fractional exponents. When you have one-third squared, you multiply the numerators and then you multiply the denominators and that's where you get two-thirds, okay guys? And then you add one, that gives you y to the five-thirds 
multiply by the reciprocal or one over five thirds, which is three fifths, and then we go zero to eight. So we get three pi over five, eight to the five thirds minus zero. So let's see. Eight to the five thirds is the cubed root of eight to the fifth power. The cubed root of eight to the fifth power. So what's that? Two to the fifth, which is 32 times three times pi over five, which is 96 pi over five cubic units. I want to say, does anybody have questions? Are we ready? So again, it'll be solid. Thank you, Gwen. If your region is butt up against the axis of rotation, keep that in mind. As long as your region's butt up, it's going to give us disks. Last practice before we talk about holes. Not that one. We'll skip the E. We'll skip the E and we'll go straight to straight lines because I want to give tests back, okay? E, 4 minus x, y equals 4 minus x is a, Derek, what is that? That's a, 4 minus x is a, what kind of function? Not quadratic, linear function. It's going to be a straight line, isn't it? Yeah? Logan, and y equal 2x plus 1 is also a, straight line? Yeah, it's linear, absolutely. John, so we got two straight lines. You got those straight lines? Can you grab those straight lines for me? Set up a table, guys, and give me those two straight lines. Take those straight lines and bound them by x equals zero, and then revolve it around which axis? The y-axis. Around the y-axis, which means we're going to be integrating with respect to y. Okay, here we go. Let's see that bit. Now rotate that sucker. What do you get? What do you get? What does it look like? It's so pretty. It's so cool. I need visuals to help us out here. <laughs> you guys have to be tired. I don't address the affected domain in here. I don't think I have too many freshmen in here. So, so I don't have to address freshman concerns necessarily, although if you are a freshman, and remember you go to RAs. And are those where you go if you have issues? You guys say go to an RA if there's issues going on. in the middle yes these are graphing i think i see graphs going on i think i see graphs going on let me get black here and see my graphs going on let's see y equals four minus x see if your picture's matching my picture so two three four oh that's not good let me do this better i need to be nicer you know what i should actually put some graph paper on here Oh, I should have brought you guys some graph paper. <sighs> graph paper is the bomb when it comes to graphing these things. So we've got a straight line. Y equals 4 minus X. And then we've got another line. Y equals 2X plus 1. Do you see a triangle thing? Are you guys seeing this triangle shape? Right? So I've got like this triangle shape. And then I'm mirror imaging it. And I'm kind of making a circle through it. So it's like a, a top, 
like a funky top, right? It's kind of like a top, a spinny top or something like that. Or an ice cream cone and another ice cream cone, like butt against each other in the middle. Or like a slushy cup on top of a slushy cup, right? And we know our axis of rotation is the thing that goes through the middle. So the axis of rotation is the y-axis. And when I go to make my circles, I'm cutting perpendicular to the y-axis. What are you noticing about this shape? What are you noticing as I'm cutting? James. Why do you have two different integrals? Because you have what? My circles change at different rates depending on which line they're cutting. Because if you look at these squares, we have circles that are formed down here, and then we have a different circle that's formed up here. And depending on where you are, depending on where you are, you have a different outside function. If you're cutting down here, this guy is defining your circles. This function is defining your circles. And if you're cutting up here, then this function is defining your cuts. Are you with me? Do you guys see what I mean, kind of? So up top, up top, you've got circles, oops, circles up here. And then we've got down here, circles down here. But they're changing based on our radiuses. So up top, let me just expand and make my function a little better. Up top, I have my area that I'm looking at. So I have this radius right here that's perpendicular to my axis of rotation. So this green radius is the distance to that outer function right there, which is this guy here. And be oh, slow down. So James, give me your two integrals. I'm going way too fast. We're integrating with respect to y, so your limits have to be along the y-axis, and what did you go from? From 1 to 3 and 3 to 4. Thank you very much. You've got two separate integrals that cut right there when they switch. And the bottom radius is defined by the bottom function, and the top radius is defined by the top function. So I'm just going to put blue here to correspond with those blue circles on top. Nope, Tina, you did that wrong. Try that again. The bottom is 1 to 3, so those are my green circles down the bottom. And then the top is 3 to 4, and those are my blue circles. And I have one more thing I want to emphasize because you're integrating with respect to y. That means you want to take your radius and make it x equals some number, right? It's a function of y. So you should be swapping those functions and turning them into x equals, right? x equals. And the other function, y minus 1 equals 2x y minus 1 over 2 equals x, x equals. So when you go to substitute those in, you should be solving for x, right? x equals. You don't have to work it out. You really don't have to unless you want to. It's so good practice. It's so good practice if you do. Nice. Do you see it? Okay. You don't have to work it out unless you want to. Every time you do math, every time you engage in math, you strengthen your brain muscles. Okay. If you don't want to work it out, it's okay because we're going to do one more problem, and that is we're going to take that same shape and we're going to rotate it about the x-axis next, 
okay? So I'm just wondering first to make sure everybody has that shape that's this solid shape because it's solid because it's but against the axis of rotation and so I know it's a solid shape. But what happens is if now I'm walking around and making sure everybody's got their problem here, okay? But then we're gonna go around the x-axis and it's no longer solid. It's no longer solid. I think it'll be four minus y, but it won't matter because we're squaring it. But it would be four minus y. Beautiful, beautiful. Show me your setups, guys. Show me your setups so I know we all got it. Well, that's If you have questions, just stick your hand up. Integral from 1 to 3 pi times the bottom radius, which is the bottom radius, which is my green line, which happens to be this line up here, which is y minus 1 over 2 squared. I think most people that I saw had that. And it went from 1 to 3. The second one went from 3 to 4. And that was the upper curve, which was my blue function, which is defined by 4 minus y. So you should have 4 minus y squared up here. So this would be the volume of the solid of revolution about the y-axis. And I checked most of you guys, but if anybody I didn't check, do you have a question? Robert, question. Uh, no, you shouldn't. I think 2x plus 1 and 4 minus x both hit at 3. I think they both hit here at 3. Because if x is 1, y is 3. If x is 1, y is 3. I think they both hit at 3. That wasn't your question. I'll come by. Well, okay, so the other thing is, notice my limits... Because I'm, I'm going around the y-axis, my limits have to match my variable of integration, which is y. So I have to be running along the y-axis for my limits. That's why I have a 1 to 3 for this first part, and then a 3 to 4 for the second part. I'll come by, Robert, and you can show me. Question, other questions? Ethan. Why is it 4 minus y? Let's see. So the equation was y equals 4 minus x, and I want to solve for x. So maybe I'll add x to both sides, 
and that gives me y plus x equals 4, and I'm solving for x, so now let me subtract y from both sides. Are you with me? You could also look at it like this. Other questions? Robert, I'll come back then when, once I get this started here and I'll see why you have what you have. But I want to now take a setup for the volume but going about the x-axis instead of the y-axis. And this is trickier, isn't it? Right away, it's a little trickier. Zach, why is it a little trickier? First, because it's hard to visualize, isn't it? First, because it's hard to visualize. But what's my trick? My trick is draw my picture, and then on the other side, draw a mirror image of it, and then connect with circles, right? It's just a thought. What does it kind of look like? Can you picture it? A cone, kind of? Does it look like a, vol a volcano? Maybe, possibly, like a volcano? Like, can you picture how it's like this round lava? Like a, It's like a cone cut off at the top, right? It's kind of, if I put that shape up straight, it's kind of like this. This is kind of what's going on. It's got this, it's like a volcano almost, where it, cut, not quite, okay, don't like the volcano idea. But in any case, what do I notice about this shape? Is it solid all the way through? No. It's got a gap in there, doesn't it? It's got a hole. It's got a gap. And how do I recognize it has a gap? Well, because if I look right here, I've got a distance between my axis of rotation and my shape. I have a distance between my axis of rotation, and my shape. That creates a gap. Moreover, it will create a hole when I'm doing my cross sections. Okay, so here we go. Ready. In this case, my axis of rotation is the x-axis. So before we even talk anything, you have to recognize that you're integrating with respect to x. Now, if you look at this shape, when we do our cross section, we're no longer getting a solid circle. Instead, what happens when I cut this sucker? Remember, we talked about this last time. We're getting a hole in the middle, and what did we call this shape that we're getting? A washer. So what's happening is when we cut these shapes and pull them out, what we're getting are washers. Now those washers are defined by two shapes, the outer circle, the bigger circle, and then the smaller circle or the hole. And so when we go to create the area for that cross section of the washers, okay, we have to take the big area of that big circle and take off, subtract off that little circle that's in the middle. So we want to subtract off the area for that little circle in the middle. And that's going to give us the cross sectional area for a washer. We're going to take our big radius, or our outer circle, subtract the area of the inner circle. Okay. So, let's do this. Let's do this. This guy up here. Let me erase this so we have a picture. This guy up here, when we make our washers, our washers will be perpendicular 
to the axis of rotation, just like our disks. If they're perpendicular to the axis of rotation, that means we will integrate along the x-axis. And that also means the radiuses are perpendicular to the axis of rotation as well. And you will have two radiuses. You will have your inner radius, which comes from taking the, the, the piece that creates the hole. So we have this inner radius that comes from the piece that's the inside part. Are you with me as it rotates around? And then we have our bigger radius, which is the outside part as it goes around. And so we'll have two little pieces, a big radius and a little radius. Now, my big radius is always defined by the same function when I go about the x-axis. Do you see that? And my little radius is also defined by the same function as I go about the x-axis. Therefore, I don't need to set up two integrals. I just have one integral along the x-axis. What is that shape bounding by? It's bounded by 1. Did you guys find that they meet at 1? So along the x-axis, I will go from 0 to 1. But what I will be integrating is two separate areas, one for the bigger or outer shape minus one for the inner shape. Some people like to split this up into two separate integrals, and that's perfectly fine. If your brain likes to do it with two integrals, do it with two integrals. Some people like to all just put it in one integral. But my big radius is the one defined by the outside function. Is it y equal 4 minus x? Is that my bigger outside function? Is that my bigger radius out here? I think that's the curve y equals 4 minus x. So I have 4 minus x being my bigger radius. And my inside function is the other curve y equal 2x plus 1, and I think that's my inside radius. I don't think. I know that's my inside radius. And so the integral that you would set up to find this volume is going to be pi times the outer function, which is 4 minus x squared, minus pi times the inner function, which is 2x plus 1 squared. How are you guys? James. Can we pull a pi out in front of our integral again? Absolutely, you can pull a pi out in front of your integral, 1,000%. I am going to tell you one thing. This, just like with integration techniques, when you go home and practice these, it's going to kind of make sense, but when you have to put them all together and we take and rotate this shape around the different axes completely, your brain starts to go crazy. So practice these problems mindfully when you're doing your homework and ask for more problems from me. Tina, give me more problems so that you can really, really feel good about these, okay? That's my introduction to washers. We will do more washer problems next time as well as blow your mind away when we introduce a different technique called cylindrical shell method for calculating volumes. So. So I know, I'm blowing your mind. Your minds are going to go crazy for a little bit here. Make sure you start your homework on disks and washers. I moved it to Friday just because it's a lot to do before now and Wednesday, all right? But, but, but if you can, try and get this one done as far as you can because cylindrical shells mixed in with the mix just makes your heads go berserk, okay, guys? All right. Also, you have homework due tonight. That's the solid of revolution because we're taking a region in the xy plane and we're rotating it around an axis of rotation. Okay, so we're taking the region bounded by y equals x cubed, y equals 8, x equals 0, and we're sending it about the x-axis. And the question says, what makes this solid different than what we've done before? Well, we started it last time, so it's not that different, but it's going to have a hole in it. These have holes in them. They are not solid all the way through. They're going to have a gap. Yeah. So, yes, sir, Anthony. 
Oh, do I have graph paper? Let me see if I have graph paper. Ah, uh, you know what? I need, somebody needs to, let me see if I have some in my other class. In my other class, we're doing a lot of graphs. Let me see if I have some extra graphs in the other class. Oh, I don't know if I do. Ooh. Oh, are you willing to share a slice? Sure. Acacia's willing to share. I let, uh, somebody email me, Anthony, email me, and I will bring my graph paper next time. Uh, I will actually bring, you're so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, will, I will bring some graph paper for you guys. 1,000%, I will bring you graph paper. So first step, everybody's graphing, right? Thank you. Everybody's graphing. Everybody is graphing. Everybody's graphing. Y equals x cubed, right? Y equals x cubed. Oh, it's Let's see if we can't get pictures. So are you guys working this through? Who wants to do it up there? Who wants to go up on my iPad? Oh, beautiful. 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 Let's see. All right, let's draw this picture. Let's see what's going on here. I guess I'll do it up here. That way we have it. Okay. That way we have our start. Here we go. So we've got y equals x cubed. You guys are getting that shape, right? You're getting the thing that goes around. Yes, sir, right? So on the test, I will tell you, on your exam, I will require you to show me where is the big radius and the little radius under the washer that will be cut as a cross section. So if we're going to use washers, if we're going to use washers, we're going to be cutting perpendicular to the x-axis, right? So let me just write down, when you use washers or disks, so whether you use washers or disks, it's the same method. The difference is disks do not have a hole in them, so the formula is just pi r squared. The washers do have a hole in them, and so washers are places where you have gaps in your figure, and that formula from last time then would be pi big R square minus pi little r square. And we always cut for washers and disks, the rule is you cut perpendicular to the axis of rotation. That's how you get, and we looked at that last time, that's how we get axis of rotation. That's how we get those nice disks. Right, we're cutting perpendicular to our axis, so when we take out that slice, it's a beautiful washer. So we cut perpendicular, we take a slice out, we get this beautiful washer, we get this beautiful shape that's a washer. And so our job, and what you will be required to do on your exam, so I'll show you it now, is you will show me what is big R, and what is little r in reference to my picture? Big R is the distance 
from the axis of rotation to the outermost part of that washer. Little r is the distance from the axis of rotation to the innermost part. So big R is the outer distance and little r is the inner distance. And you will be required to show me, but we gotta do it with our shape. So going from our axis of rotation, perpendicular, right? We cut perpendicular. So our big R and little r are also perpendicular. So I'll just put that down as a note. Big R and little r are also perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So we are going to demonstrate big R is a distance from the axis of rotation to the outermost shaded. So if we take the shaded region and we take the outermost curve, that distance there becomes big R. That's our biggest radius that gets rotated around. And little r becomes our littler radius. Again, we're rotating this big shape. This is the shape that's getting flipped around. This big r is the outer curve that defines the bigger radius. The inner curve, closer to the axis, is my littler radius. Because I'm going with respect to the x-axis, that means I'm going to be integrating with respect to x, and my limits are also along the x-axis. So who wants to help me out here? Who wants to help me out? Anybody want to help me out? What are my limits? Tim, what's my limits? Zero to two. Zero to two. Beautiful. And then did you put pi and then a big R? Who wants to help? Pi big R? Who wants to go big R? Zach, do you want to try it? Uh, eight. Eight. Eight, 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 eight squared, because it's, because it's eight, we see, we physically, by writing this in, we see that distance, top minus bottom, do you see what I'm saying? I drew my arrow, that's my distance, eight minus zero, that's my top guy, and then minus, and then what's my, oh, I gotta need more space, okay, Thomas, you wanna help me out with the, ne the next cut? Um, x cubed squared, because the inner radius is that pink curve, and that pink curve is defined by y equals x cubed. Beautiful. So then it's going to be x cubed squared. Okay. Did anybody work this through by any chance? Because let's just work it through. We won't work th the rest of them through, but let's just, let's just work this one through for a minute. I have pi times 64 minus x to the what power? x to the Six power, thank you. Thanks, Hunter. We multiply, right? Power to power, we multiply. Good, 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 good. Caitlin, you wanna help me out? So what did you do? Pi times uh, 128. So you went 64x, yeah? Minus one seventh x to the seventh, and then zero to two. So yep, pi times 128 minus one seventh times, oh, two to the seventh. Is it really 128 minus zero? Oh, nice. That's cool because look, I can do this really fast. I have 128 minus 1 seventh times 128. And so what that means is I have a whole 128 minus 1 seventh 128s. And so I put it together as 6 sevenths 128s. So that's pi times 6 sevenths 128. Does seven go into 128? I don't, seven? Nope, seven doesn't go in six. Oh no, so we can just multiply this through. Sorry guys, I know I'm going backwards now. I'm making this circle here. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Did anybody multiply that out and get a big number? 768 over seven? Anybody second that? 700, Maddie does. 768 pi over seven, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. My units, because I'm doing volume, are going to be cubic units. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to stop. That's our warm-up review on washers. And I'm going to give you one for you guys to try in a second here. But are there any questions? Any? Ethan, go ahead. What's up? <laughs> Say what? Oh, good question. Why is the limit 0 to 2? Who wants to help out? Why is the limit 0 to 2? Brandon. Because you're 
highest point and your lowest point? Uh, on which axis? Uh, well, slow it again. X axis. Beautiful. Because I'm integrating with respect to X, my limits have to run along my X axis, and the region itself is bounded along the X axis from 0 to 2. Are you with me? It's because I'm integrating with respect to X. Does that make sense? And it's the highest and the lowest. Any other questions? Who's got other questions? Logan, did you get this extra credit sheet? Okay, you got it. Anybody else not get the extra point sheet? Just Any questions? Any questions? Same instructions. Same instructions. We want to find the volume. Same instructions. Oh, question, Robert. No, go ahead. What's that? Oh, you have a question. Do you want to put it back up? Okay, okay, I'll be right there. So, find the volume of the solid of revolution. Do you want me to write the instructions up, or you guys don't have them from last time? Let me write the instructions up. That way we know what we're doing in our notes. So, we are finding volumes of solids of revolution. So, let's see. Find the volume of the solid of revolution. I think I'm going to need to make him a little smaller. Uh, created by revolving the given region about the indicated axis. Those are our instructions. We are finding volumes of solids of revolution by rotating the given region about the indicated axis. And so we're going to take y equals 5x squared, y equals 5x. The region bounds those two. x greater than or equal to 0 means we're going to be looking specifically in the first quadrant. Okay, when you guys graph this thing, you'll see. And we want to send that about the y-axis. So y equals 5x squared, y equals 5x, x greater than or equal to 0 about the y-axis. There will be a gap. You will create a shape that has a gap when you do this, okay? And your job is to f use washer method to get the solid of revolution, okay? Oh, shoot. That gives me y over 5 equals x squared. So the square root of y over 5 equals x, and that's my bigger r. Thank you, James, for working that through. Thank you, thank you, thank you for working that through. Guys, anybody have a question? Did you get anything different? Is everybody okay? Do we see what to do? Any questions? <coughs> ben, ask away. Why is this square root of y over Okay, why is it square root y? So first of all, do you see that the outer radius is defined by the x squared curve? Yeah. And so if I want to solve for x, good, you got it. Okay, good. Next one. Next question. Got that one. That was easy. Question. Question? Everybody good? So I want to take, if there's no questions, no questions, right? So we're going to stretch our brain. And we are going to take that same shape, which is a funky shape, but we worked with it. You don't need to get answers. You just want to set your integrals up this time. Take that same shape, but rotate it around two different lines. The first line is x equals negative 3. The second line is x equals 7. x equals negative 3 x equals 7. So I'm going to say, what if? So what if? What if we change our problem ever so slightly? So what if? Instead of going about the x-axis, we rotate the region. about the line
x equals negative 3. So what if we rotate the region about the line x equals negative 3? And I'm just going to remind us here, our regions that we're looking at, just so I have my picture here, the region I was looking at is this region in here, and it's really small. It's like this thin little on the outside. With this one, we have y equal 5x squared, and then we have Closer in, we have this line, y equals 5x. So we're looking at taking this thin little slice here, and instead of going about the y-axis, I'm saying let's go around the line x equals negative 3. Can you picture what you're getting? Kind of like a bracelet, maybe. I, I, I mean, if you think about it, like a bangle bracelet, you're going to go around it. It's like a, uh, it's like a baking dish. It's like a pink. Like it's like a bug cake. Thinking of like a, oh, exactly. nice. a bug cake. Baking. Yeah. Oh, it's like a bug cake baking pan without the middle, almost, huh? Oh wait, hang on, let me see. It's like a bowl, but you just put it in. Yeah, oh, a little, a little bit, huh? Uh, uh, I don't know, let me see. Let me see. Where are you going around? Oh, this one over here. Oh, yeah, so it's just going to be this shape. Oh, yeah, that goes around all the way around. But actually, he's not coming in a little bit. He's just going to be So there's no. There's no. My favorite thing, because there's no. You were sending him. You yeah. took this shape, but I'm not. I'm taking this shape. Oh, just, just that. that. Just oh, okay. that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I see what you're doing. You guys got answers for me. Oh, not yet. Not yet. We don't have things. So let's look at this. Okay, guys. Let's take a look. Perpendicular to the axis of rotation, right? That's what we're doing. We're going perpendicular to our axis of rotation. So my big R is that big distance. My little r is this distance to the inside function. That's my little r. Are you all good, right? So really, what has changed? What is the only thing that has changed between my first problem and my second problem? What's changed is that these radiuses are what? They're just bigger. Everything else is the same. I'm still integrating along the y-axis, so I'm going to have 0 to 5 dy. I'm still getting washers because I have this gap inside of my shape. But my outer radius is just a little bigger. How would I get my distance for that, that radius? Yeah, Robert, it's... We are. We are. We're subtracting. We're taking right minus left, right, to get that distance. So let me draw this in. The right curve is the outer curve, and you guys already solved that. You said x equals the square root of 5 over y is that right curve. And you already solved this inner curve, too. You said that's y equals 5 over x. And so if I just want to set up my problem... I'm integrating from 0 to 5 with respect to the y-axis, pi times my bigger radius, and my big radius is square root 5 over y, right? My big radius is defined by the right curve, square root 5 over y, minus my left curve, 
which is negative 3. Or in other words, it's square root 5 over y plus 3 squared. Acacia. Square root. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh, it is y over 5. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mess that up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So it should be y over 5. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you for catching that so quickly. So that's pi times our big radius squared minus pi times our little radius squared. My little radius is the inner distance, and that's going to be... So I did that backwards, too, up here, didn't I, Acacia? I did this one backwards then, sorry. So this is x equals y over 5. Ugh, I don't know where my brain is. Not attached to my head today. Not... I need to sleep more is what I've decided for 1,000%. Okay. So in other words, to get the volume, you guys are taking 0 to 5 pi times, and then it's the square root of y over 5 plus 3 quantity squared minus pi times y over 5 plus 3 squared dy. I'm not going to integrate it out now, okay? Uh, I'm, but what would we need to do to solve that? We would have to FOIL. Right? We'd have to FOIL. We'd have to multiply. I don't want to do that out right now because I want to set up a second problem. So I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot because to be continued, you would want to work that out if you want to, to practice. Ethan, question. No? no? Good? How are you feeling? Okay with these? Yeah? Do you guys want to go about x equals 7 or should we skip that and go horizontally now? Horizontally? Okay, so let's go horizontally. All right. So that's this one. Any questions? If it's not clicking, come sit and let's practice. Because I'll tell you what, when it clicks, has anybody had a it clicks met moment yet? When it clicks, it clicks. Okay? Like it, 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 it's a good moment. All right? Any questions? How are we? Same shape. Go about the line y equals 7. Same shape. Go about the line y equals 7. Okay? Same shape again. So what if, so another what if, so what if we rotate the same region about the line y equals 7. This will be the last what if, and then I'm going to give you guys some practice problems. So what if we rotate this region about the line y equals 7? I'm going to wander right now. I'm going to answer any questions you guys might have, okay? I'll wander. <laughs> 